A vulnerability goes through different stages during its lifetime, from being introduced in the code, if it is a software vulnerability, until it has been patched with a non-vulnerable version. In this fourth part, we will discuss the different stages it goes through during the life cycle. We will also discuss how people can help reducing the exploitability of vulnerabilities through responsible disclosure and how this affects the vulnerability life cycle. So let us define the different stages in the vulnerability life cycle. The stages in the life cycle do not need to come in the exact order as given here, but some relations between the stages are fixed. The first stage is its creation. This is when the vulnerability is introduced into the software component. This could be, for example, as a result of a programming mistake, the addition of a feature that will turn out to be exploitable, or the lack of a security check such as writing outside the allocated memory. The next stage is the discovery. This is when someone identifies the vulnerability, perhaps by chance, or through some more methodological software testing. If the vulnerability is intentionally inserted, the creation and the discovery times will coincide. Then we have the exploit phase, where the discovered vulnerability is verified to be exploitable using maybe certain HTTP requests, communication patterns, or a sequence of commands. Next, we have the disclosure phase. This is when the vulnerability becomes publicly known to a wider audience. The patch available stage is when the vendor has released a software update that remediates the vulnerability such that it is no longer exploitable. Some vendors publish patches as soon as they are available, while some only publish patches or updates on a predefined schedule. For high severity vulnerabilities, such schedules can of course be bypassed when there is a need for immediate remediation. In many cases, a patch is available before the vulnerability is publicly disclosed. Sometimes when a patch is available, the vulnerability can be regarded as disclosed since the patch can be analyzed in order to understand the vulnerability, though the vulnerability information has not yet made its way to the vulnerability databases such as NVD. In some cases, there is a significant delay between public disclosure and patching. This presents a window of opportunity for attackers to exploit the vulnerability. However, this window is actually not between the disclosure and the patch available phases, it is between the disclosure phase and the last phase, which is the patch installation phase. This is when a user has deployed the patch in an update. In case patches are pushed out to end users, there might not be very much time between the patch available and the patch installation phase, but if the patch requires manual work on the user side, it could take a long time for a patch or new software version to be deployed. For users and developers using vulnerable open source or third-party components, this is where automation has an important role. A software composition analysis tool can minimize the attack window by fully automating the identification of newly disclosed vulnerabilities, map them to the software and verify if the software is vulnerable. When the vulnerability has been disclosed, users and developers can be immediately informed and then, as soon as a patch is available, a pull request to update the software to a newer version can be generated. In case a patch is already available upon disclosure, it can sometimes only be a matter of minutes between vulnerability disclosure and the deployment of the software using the patch component. A related term that is often used in this context is zero-day vulnerabilities. These are vulnerabilities that have not yet been disclosed, so a vulnerability is a zero-day vulnerability between the discovery and the disclosure phases. If the vulnerability is discovered by a malicious actor, then this actor will have an attack window that ranges from the phase where an exploit is available until the patch has been installed. The most dangerous phase here is between the exploit phase and the disclosure phase, since now the vulnerability is not known to the wider audience. Because even if we do not have a patched system or even a patch available, we are still able to detect an attack if we know about the vulnerability. But if we don't even know about the vulnerability, we wouldn't know what to be looking for if we want to detect an attack. Responsible disclosure is a process that allows a vulnerability to be reported to a vendor such that the vulnerability can be patched before it is disclosed to the wider audience. This process involves obligations and cooperation both from the researcher that discovers the vulnerability, but also from the vendor. The cooperation between them is key to the success. From the researcher's point of view, 
when a vulnerability has been found, he or she should report it to the vendor, either directly or through a third party that can help facilitate the process. Then the vendor should be given enough time to patch the vulnerability. Enough time can here be a bit arbitrary and depend both on the severity of the vulnerability and the efforts needed to remediate it and publish a patch. Around 30 to 90 days are commonly seen, with a possibility to extend it if the vendor is responsive and actively working to fix the vulnerability. From the vendor's point of view, there are several obligations to fulfill in order to facilitate the responsible disclosure process. The researcher has actually not very much to gain from delaying the disclosure, other than being a good person and help the vendor, of course. Because what if someone else finds the same vulnerability and discloses it sooner? Then the credit of discovery will go to someone else. And what if the communication with the vendor is delayed, the report is ignored, or if the vendor takes legal action against someone looking for vulnerabilities in their systems or services? At the same time, the vendor has much to gain from the responsible disclosure process. The chance of being able to patch the vulnerability before it is publicly disclosed can significantly improve both the actual and the perceived security of a system or service. The fact that there is a vulnerability from the beginning is often not seen as a sign of bad development. Even the best developers and most security-aware organizations will have vulnerabilities. The important thing is how they are handled and how their impact is minimized. To facilitate the process, the vendor should have a clear and published policy for how to handle reported vulnerabilities. This should include a dedicated point of contact, a statement that reporters will not face legal issues for their reports, and the estimated time for answering reports. In addition, once a report has been submitted, the vendor should maintain communication with the reporter until the issue is resolved. To encourage and incentivize submissions of vulnerability reports through responsible disclosure, vendors also often offer monetary rewards for interesting findings. This is mutually beneficial since the researchers get paid for their work and the vendor only have to pay for actual findings that are valuable for their security. This whole process can be facilitated by a third party that provides a framework for communication, payouts, and ultimately the disclosure of a vulnerability. We have seen that the vulnerability goes through a number of stages in its life cycle. Due to the availability of exploits and public information about vulnerabilities, it is important to patch the software as soon as possible. In some cases, it can be just a matter of hours before a severe vulnerability is exploited on a wide scale. This is particularly true for open source vulnerabilities where many systems are using the exact same software with the same vulnerability. The severity of a vulnerability will depend on how likely and how easy it is to be exploited and also how bad the consequences will be. In the next part, we will take a detailed look at how the CVSS severity score is used to rank and measure the severity of a vulnerability. We will also look at what information we can get by looking at the CVSS score.